All right, so let's do our first implementation. We're going to do this finite state machine of the 430 lock that we made last time and implement it on a PLC. So the first thing you have to know is how is this system going to get wired? Like where are these buttons? Like which inputs are they going to actually go to? Where's the inner button going? Where's the clear button going? These are decisions that I've, I've made for you, so I'm just going to tell you how we're going to wire this thing. Uh, so what I chose to do is I chose to make... Um, one, two, three, and four, they kind of make sense, right? So I put button number one to I1, button number two to I2, three to three, four to four, that makes sense. There is no I0, so I decided that the zero button, you know, it's like some button that has to get wired somewhere. I took it to I8. I just kind of picked that, that's where I decided to go. Uh, and then enter and clear, same story, I just had to kind of pick one. I decided I5 would be where I would wire the enter button to, and I6 would be for the clear. Uh, likewise for the outputs, you have to, to say what's going to be connected to your, your red light, so it's like a, a real bulb that's like red or green. I decided Q1 would be green, Q2 would be red. Arbitrary decisions, we're not going to really build the thing anyway, so that's what I decided. I decided to go ahead and make you a little visual of this pretend uh, pretend system. So you can see that all these push buttons um, are normally open momentaries. So they're the friendliest type of switch so that you didn't have to worry anything uh, tricky. So as soon as you press it, so if you press down on this guy, it's going to be connected to the AC hot um, and it's going to show up as being made. Interestingly enough, you can see that this system had actually used all of the inputs except for I7. So it's using almost all of the input possibility. Uh, and then on the outputs, there's just a green and a red, so only two of the four outputs have been connected. Uh, but I really like pictures like this because it helps me visualize, you know, what this what this system, if you were building it, uh, would actually look like. So our goal is to take these these rules for how this thing is connected, and like put these details into the finite state machine. So the finite state machine that we've got so far has no um, numbers, right? Um, and then here it doesn't actually say the eyes, it just kind of says generic information. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pick a, a markering system. Um, I just went ahead and did marker one, two, three, four. I'm pretty sure this one I made five, and that one I made six. And I did the same thing as before. Only one marker should be on at a time. It's just an easy way to actually do this implementation. If you ever have more than one on at a time, you've done something wrong, right? And then all these I's are easy, right? So you just have to go through a three, you just replace with that. A zero was an I8, uh, enter was an I5. Kind of a tedious mission, so I've done it for you on the next slide. So here is the finite state machine, same finite state machine, with the implementation details for a PLC. I mean, specifically um, for the one that we've made. A couple little things that I did in here just to mention it to be tricky. Um, one problem that you have is what's called shoot through. It's actually harder to implement. If this combination had been like 44430, that would have actually been harder to implement because that like detection of an edge on the four, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to see. For simplicity, this is just for simplicity. Um, I'm going to implement it such that if you press 4, like twice, if it picks up 2, um, you don't go to error. So if you press 4, you let off, you press 4 again, 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 um, it stays in the successful 4 state. And that's for simplicity, because it's kind of tricky to, to allow repeated digits in your combo. There are ways you can do it, but it involves impulse relay, and it, it gets ugly, right? So I just wanted to mention real quickly, you'll notice that, and same story here, three takes you into the state, uh, but another three will not take you to error. It just actually stays there. One thing you will see with finite state machines is people draw loops to themselves. You can do that, right? Um, the one thing I'll mention is that I usually don't bother to do the loop to itself, because if it doesn't go out, then it must stay there, right? So I, I usually omit the loops to itself. I meant to say that earlier. Uh, but each of these kind of has a loop to itself um, for that repeated digit. All right, I just kind of wanted to warn you that. There's quite a bit here, and we're going to implement it in PicoSoft. But to make your life easier, I'm going to give you a starting point. 
it. Um, and so what I've decided to do is I've decided to give you some starting code. Uh, so I've put a link just above this video. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download that link uh, to your computer. Uh, remember where you downloaded it to. I put mine into like a folder with some other stuff and then uh, open it up. So what this finite state machine has in it already um, is it's got some code uh, done not much. It's got that reset line already done and then it's got all the different paths to failure done just because they're tedious, right? So I only did them just to save you some time. So I've implemented all those arrows, um, the paths to failure, and then your job is to finish this thing. So I've got that uh, in the slides as well. So what still needs to be completed, uh, the things that still need to be completed um, are all of the normal transitions, you know, the four, the three, the zero, and the inner. So you've kind of got to do those. Um, you've got to do the clears. So for every state, right, every state has a clear, which is actually easy to implement, it turns out. And then you've also got to do the two actions. Uh, this one is a melee action because it depends on inputs. And then this one is a more action. I would really like for you to do this one by yourself, right? Because we've given you plenty of experience. This is like where you kind of drive home the message. Uh, see if you can actually make this thing work. Uh, what you can do is in the simulation, you know, you can actually try it out. Um, make sure they're all set as normally opens, uh, momentaries. Looks like I had to fix one of them. Um, and then actually, like, you know, watch the markers on this guy uh, and see if you can and track this thing all the way around. So right now, obviously, if I hit run, um, so if I hit play right now, I'm in the ready state. Um, if I were to hit four, um, it does not take me out of the ready state yet because... I haven't implemented it. Um, if I were to hit something like two, uh, that would drop me into failure, right? So that would drop me into failure. Um, and likewise, there are no outputs yet. Uh, you're going to have to implement those. So if I if I try to hit I5 when I'm in failure, does not show a red LED. Um, so you're going to have to still implement that. All right. So I've told you plenty of what you need to do. Uh, let's see if you can make it happen on your own. All right, if you tested this and it works, you don't even have to watch the rest of the video. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of add them, pause the video as I go, and just knock these guys out. Uh, so the first one I'm going to do is clear. All right, so there's clear. It's a weird one because it doesn't depend on state. Because no matter where you are, uh, you come to marker 1. So I just said, if you see an I6, and I wrote the word clear above it, then set marker 1 and reset. I don't even care who you came from. Reset two, three, four, five, six. Very thorough, no way to get messed up. There's clear. Now I'm just going to start going around the horn, kind of starting at the beginning uh, and just knocking each of the four kind of successful path transitions out. So if I'm in marker one and I see an I4, uh, I transition. So I reset one and I set two. Now I'll do the next one. If I'm in marker two uh, and I see an I3, then I reset two and I set three, so I move to the next one. If I'm in three and I get a zero, which is actually I8, uh, then I reset three and I move to four. And then once I've got in uh, the four, the three, and the zero, if I'm in the zero state and I see the enter, uh, that's what moves me into the success state. Um, and just so you, you know, that's where I'm going to turn the green light on. Um, so I've actually finished all the transitions here. I did the clears kind of all together, and then I had the four separate ones that I kind of knocked out one at a time. Uh, the only thing I've got left are the two actions. The first action I'm going to implement is easy. Uh, it's kind of a more like action. If I'm in marker five, uh, then light the green LED. Um, and that's just kind of how I chose to implement it. If I'm successful, just show you're successful all the time. And then the other output, if I'm in the failure state um, and I'm pressing the enter button, so I chose to make this a melee machine just so it, it didn't show you instantly when it went wrong. You have to like try to press enter uh, before it shows you. It just makes the lock a little harder to, to back solve, right? Um, and if I'm in those, then I see the red LED. So once you've kind of got those, um, it's time to test it. Make sure everybody's set as a normally open momentary. Those look good. 
uh, I like to go ahead and track my markers down here. Uh, and then I like to just view my cues on the screen if, uh, if I can get a situation where they all fit. And it looks like I've got it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Uh, I can say I start off good. I'm in the ready state. Uh, so that's great. If I hit four, three, and then my zero is I8, and then zero, uh, and then I press I5 for enter. Uh, presto, I've got my green success light. If I I6, that should clear me out. Uh, and if I type something wrong, like I hit a, a button two off the go, boom, I'm in the failure state. You'll notice that the Q2 is not on until I try to press I5, which is enter, uh, and then I see that failure thing. Uh, so this implements the finite state machine in PicoSoft. Um, it's, I, I like PicoSoft, like each of these lines very clearly, like I almost just like see the arrows when I see these lines. Uh, hopefully you've kind of gotten to the point on that. Next thing we want to do is we're going to implement it with a pick. That'll be a little bit harder, but it's kind of the, the point of this video lecture, right? All right, see you next time when we do it on a pick.